to make the dance formal. Oh, sure, I could wear my blue, but I don't have an evening wrap. Oh, I couldn't wear a plain old cloth coat over an evening gown. It's just not sophisticated. Oh, that was all right when we were young and naive, but let's face it, we're mature and sophisticated. Well, I'll think of something. Maybe I... <laughs> Goodbye, Mildred. Here's the phone, Danny. Corliss, I... And please don't be long. I'm expecting a call. <laughs> Hello, operator. I want to place a person-to-person -person call to Chicago, Illinois. I want to talk to Mr. Peter Jessup. No, I don't know his phone number. Hi, Mom. Are you talking with Mildred for tonight? Oh, sure. Until later. What you doing? Making my shopping list for the week. Well, couldn't I do that for you? Well, that's very sweet, dear, but I don't think you need to bother about I've it. been thinking. You do so much work around here, and I think it's only fair that I should help you more than I do. I mean, after all, it's only fair that I should. I mean, golly, when you consider how much work you do do and how much work that I... All right, dear, if you want to do this, go ahead. Thanks. Did you make your call? No, the line was busy. They're going to call me back. And there it is now. I'm expecting a call from Dexter. I haven't heard from you for almost an hour. Gee, that was fun, Mom. I enjoyed helping you. Be glad to do it any time at all. Thank you, dear. That was really sweet. It's for me, Daddy. Well, as I tell you, it's for me. It's my long-distance call. Yes, operator? Oh, no. It's the empty sweatshirt. Hi, Dexter. Listen, call it. Please don't tie up the wire again. If you have something about tell them to come over here. Maybe we'll be lucky and you'll get lost on the way. Oh, I'm sorry, Dexter. What were you saying? Listen, Corliss, I was just walking down the street thinking about you and how pretty you are and... Well, I made up a poem about your nose. Oh, Dex, you're so romantic. You're just adorable. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you want to hear the poem about your nose? Okay. Here goes. Let me have that phone. I'll get him off the wire. Oh, your turned up nose is lovely. Still, I'm worried about you all. For into every turned up nose, a little rain must fall. <laughs> well, how'd you like it? <laughs> and furthermore, Dexter. Oh, Daddy, please. All right, but get him off the wire. All right, Daddy. Listen, Dex. Can you come right over? Heck no, I'm not coming over there. I know when I'm not wanted, and your father doesn't like me. Well, who ever gave you that idea? Your father. <laughs> well, I guess we don't go to the dance, that's all. You don't have an evening wrap, and I don't have a tuxedo. So we don't go. Oh, but Dexter, after all the plans we've made, if we don't go to the dance, wouldn't you just die? Well, that might be one way of getting a tuxedo. Huh? Well, if I died, my folks might buy me a tuxedo to bury me in. Well, now stop being silly. We're going to that dance. How? It's very simple. I'll merely borrow Mom's evening wrap, and you'll merely borrow your father's tuxedo. No, Corliss, things aren't that merely. What do you mean? My father and his tuxedo are at a convention in St. Louis, and they won't be back for a week. Oh. I've got it. Listen, Dexter, you can borrow Daddy's tuxedo. Your father's? Yes. Corliss, your father wouldn't lend me a glass of water if I was on fire. <laughs> Dexter? I wish you'd stop thinking Daddy doesn't like you, because he does. You just don't understand him. I don't? No. What you've got to understand is that when Daddy's cross with you, he's merely being... Sincere. Oh, yeah? Well, what about last week when he told me to get out of here and never come back? He was just being more sincere than usual. Well, I still don't think he'll lend me his tuxedo. As a matter of fact, I'm quite sure of it. If you want to prove it, ask him. I couldn't. I'm going to have enough trouble getting Mom's evening wrap. It's brand new, and golly, I've never, ever asked for that. So you ask Daddy for the tuxedo. Me? Yes. Don't tell me you're afraid. Well, Corliss, I've got a good reason to be afraid. What? I'm a coward. 
<laughs> oh, don't be silly. Now, there's nothing to worry about. I'm going to get the wrap. You're going to get the tuxedo merely by asking Daddy for it right now. Corliss? Yeah, Corliss, I... Mr. Archer. I say, Mr. Archer. <laughs> now, see here, Archer. <laughs> now, see here, Mr. Archer. <laughs> Mr. Archer. <laughs> By the way, Mr. Archer. Yes? Uh, did you want to talk to me? Uh, uh, yes. All right. Mr. Archer. Yes? You sit down. <laughs> Mr. Archer, let's look at this thing this way. All right. Well, now, we've always been friends, haven't we? Yes. Well, then. Well, well, you know what they say about friendship. No, I'm afraid I don't, Dexter. What do they say about friendship? Well, they say all sorts of things, like, uh, like, uh, what is so rare as a friend in need? Dexter, that's a day in June. <laughs> Dexter, do you want something from me? Well, in a way, yes. What? Well, if you let me... I mean, how about if... Well, it's probably we're my such good friends long distance call, call, excuse me. I mean, how would it be if... Could you... Now, where were we? Uh, Dexter, you wanted to ask me for something. Well... Well, what? Well, Carlos and I are going to a dance, you yes. know. Yes. And, uh... Well, here it comes. Now he'll ask for the tuxedo. He made it. It was a hard fight, but the kid made it. Good for you, Dexter. That settles the question of whether you're a man or a mouse. Well, Carlos was afraid to ask Mrs. Archer for evening wrap, and I promised her I'd ask you to ask Mrs. Archer. Well, brother, he wouldn't even make a good mouse. And that's what all this is about? Yeah. Well, that's no problem. I'll be glad to talk to Mrs. Archer. And thanks for telling me, Dexter. Good night. I wonder how old you have to be to join the Foreign Legion. <laughs> well, you can be sure Corliss carried out her end of the bargain. Little thing like talking to her mother wouldn't scare her for a minute. Well, maybe for a minute. Mom. Yes, dear? Mom, I've been thinking. Isn't it wonderful how we've always been such good friends? Yes, dear, I think it's quite wonderful. And, golly, you know what they always say about friends. Well, no, I'm not sure that I do, Corliss. What do they say about friends? Well, golly, they say all sorts of things, like, like... He who steals my purse steals trash. But he who steals my friend steals my friend. I think you're a little confused, dear. That's he who steals my good name. Oh. Well, we are friends, and friends do things for each other, don't they? By any chance, is there anything you'd like for me to do for you right now? Well, now that you mention it, well, in a way, yes. What is it? She's about to ask for the evening wrap. See? I told you she wouldn't be afraid. I guess I know something about teenage girls. Well, Dexter was afraid to ask Daddy if, if he could borrow his tuxedo for the dance, and I promised him I'd ask you if you'd ask him. Well, a guy can't be right every time. Oh, Carlos, I don't think there's any problem. Of course I'll ask your father, and I'm sure he'll be glad to do it. Well, Dexter's probably thought of something by now. Just look at that face and you know he's bright. Just look at that face and you know he's intelligent. Just look at that face. Dexter, did you talk to Daddy? Yeah, I talked to him. Oh. Did you talk to your mother? Well, sure, I talked to her. Oh. Dexter... Oh, what were you going to say? No, no, go ahead. What were you going to say? Well, I think we've made a mistake. I don't think we should borrow anything from Mom and Dad to wear to the dance. 
Then we're not going? Of course we're going. How? On our own. On our own what? Now listen, Dexter. I'm going to get a wrap and you're going to get a tuxedo and we're going to do it by ourselves. How? We'll rent them. Without money? Oh, Dexter, are you broke again? Broke? It's a compound fracture. <laughs> well, I have some money saved from my allowance and I think it'll be enough for the wrap. Surely you could raise some money someplace. For example? Well, you could get a job. Corliss, let's not be fantastic about this. Why haven't you got something you could sell? Anything you could make some money on. Hey, I've got an idea. What? Well, do you think they'd pay me in advance if I promised to leave my brain to the Harvard Medical School? Oh, now be serious. Listen, Dexter, that new carburetor on your car. Oh, now, Corliss. You know you could sell it to Martin Wilcox. Corliss, that car's the most precious thing in the world to me next to you, and I'm not fooling around with that. Oh, but Dex. No, nothing doing. But Dex, it's just no. a car. No, and nothing you can say can change my mind. Dexter. Oh, Dexter. Except that. Then you'll do it? Yeah, I'll do it. Oh, Dexter, you're wonderful. Holy cow. <laughs> well, I better go get that carburetor. She was I'm ashamed to do it after all that car's done for me. I'll never be able to look at square in the headlights again. <laughs> if it had headlights. <laughs> And now, back to Meet Corliss Archer. When Mr. and Mrs. Archer have anything to say to each other, they come right out and say it. They don't have to play games. Now, Mrs. Archer wants to say something to Mr. Archer. So... <laughs> well, maybe it wasn't important. But when Mr. Archer wants to speak to Mrs. Archer, there's no beating around the bush and no hesitancy. <laughs> Janet, Harry. I... <laughs> what were you going to say, dear? Go ahead, Harry. What were you going to say? Well, I'm a little troubled, Janet. Oh? Yes, a little while ago, Dexter told me that Corliss wanted to borrow your evening wrap to wear to the dance, but she was afraid to ask you. Really? Yes, and you know, that's not right, Janet. Now, I'm not scolding you, and I'm not trying to criticize, but we should talk this thing through. Because there's something wrong when a daughter doesn't feel close enough to her mother to make such a request for herself. Well, that's right, Harry. I agree. I'll talk to Carlos, and of course she can borrow the wrap. <sighs> Good. Now, I'd like to talk to you for a minute. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not scolding and I'm not criticizing. But do you think it's any worse for Corliss to be afraid to ask me for something than it is for Dexter to be afraid to ask you for something? Well, I can assure you that I've never given Dexter any cause to be afraid of me. Then why did he ask Corliss to ask me to ask to lend him your tuxedo? Did he do that? Yes. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I'll have a talk with Dexter and straighten the kid out. All right? All right, Harry. Then you will let him borrow your tuxedo. I will not. No, Harry. Nothing doing. Now, don't forget, we're going to a formal dinner Sunday night, and I want that tuxedo in good shape. It won't be in worse shape than my wrap, and it's going to the same dance. Well... Well... <laughs> all right, Janet, you win. Thank you, dear, and don't look so glum. After all, what could he do to your tuxedo? No, I don't know. <laughs> But I'm sure he'll think of something. <laughs> well, now that he's made up his mind to let Dexter borrow his tuxedo, you can be sure Mr. Archer will let the kid know about it before he spends his hard-earned money to rent one. Well, I talked to my partner. We can rent you this item for eight dollars. All right? Okay. <laughs> Fine. Let's see now. We'll have to take it in a little right here under the arm and... Well, we'll take it in a little all around. It'll be a perfect fit. Okay. <laughs> of course, there'll be a slight charge for alterations, say, uh, two dollars. And with a city sales tax, charge for materials, and of course, insurance, that'll come to about four and a half dollars. And, uh, what about shoes? Have you got evening shoes? Well, well no. Well, we'll I... say another two and a half dollars. 
And how about a dress shirt and tie? Whoa, I... Well, let's add another three dollars. <laughs> yes, sir. When we're finished with you for seventeen dollars, you'll look like you just stepped out of Esquire magazine. Right now, I look like I was thrown out of the Hobo News. <laughs> seventeen dollars. That's all right, isn't it? Oh, 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 sure. Except right now, I'm nine dollars short. Oh, what a shame. Well, don't worry. I can pay the balance back out of my allowance. How much allowance do you get? A dollar and a half. How are you going to pay nine dollars out of a dollar and a half? In installments. I see. That'll take six weeks. Seventeen. Yeah, seventeen dollars. No, seventeen weeks. Huh? I owe my father my next eleven weeks allowance. <laughs> then you won't get any allowance for eleven weeks? Ten. Huh? He owes me a dollar and a half for mowing the lawn. Oh. If he pays me. What? I didn't do a very good job. Well, then I you... broke the lawnmower. Well, what? So he may charge me. Charge you for what? For fixing the lawnmower. Well, then you'll be even. No. Why? It costs five bucks. Oh, well, well, wait a minute. Well, let's see now. Uh, how much is five bucks from 11 weeks plus a dollar and a half, if he pays me? Well, I... Oh, oh, and minus another dollar, because Martin owes me a dollar for putting in the carburetor. In the lawnmower? No, in his car. The engine doesn't run. You have to push it. The car? No, the lawnmower. Well, well so well, you can deduct that dollar. How much does that make it? Well, oh, and I could run errands for you. Say, for a dollar an hour? Listen, as please. In fact, I could drive errands for you if you'd knock off enough for me to get my carburetor back. And then, if my father doesn't charge me for the lawnmower, I could pay the whole thing off right now. That is, if he gives me the dollar and a half for mowing the lawn. Otherwise, that fucking half is... Stop. That's enough. Just take the whole outfit. The suit, the shoes, the shirt, the tie. Take everything. Just stop talking! <laughs> Corliss hasn't yet seen Dexter in his rented tuxedo. But when she does, she's in for a surprise. Because a tuxedo can do wonderful things for a man. It gives him an air of charm and grace and sophistication such as he never had before. He becomes a man of the world. Graceful, worldly, soft-spoken. A man who... Hey, Carlos, look, I got the... <laughs> tuxedo. Let me see how you look. Well? Golly, Dexter. You look handsome. She was. Didn't you think I was handsome before I got a tuxedo? Oh, sure. You're always handsome. This is just the first time you've ever looked handsome. Well, thanks. <laughs> Golly, I'm going to be so proud of you at the dance. I'll bet you'll be the handsomest man there. Hey, what's she eating? Chocolate sundae. You want some? Sure. There's some extra chocolate sauce if you want it. Oh, yeah. Golly. Wait till Daddy sees how wonderful you look. In here, Daddy. No, sit down. I want it to be a surprise. Well, Corliss, I... Hello, Dexter. I want to talk to you. Yes, Mr. Archer? I just want you to know it's perfectly all right for you to borrow my tuxedo for the dance. Well, gee, thanks, Mr. Archer, but I got news for you. Yeah, what? This. <laughs> Dexter. What do you mean, borrowing my tuxedo before I gave you my permission? Mr. Now, look what you've done to it. You've ruined it. Now, Mr. Archer, what, what, how can you be so careless? I'll never be able to wear that mess Sunday night. But, but Corliss, the telephone's ringing. Answer it. Mr. Archer, now, let's not lose our heads. Dexter, you idiot. Please, you see, I've got to explain. This for you, Daddy. Long distance. Don't go away. I'm not through with you yet. <laughs> Hello. Yes, I'll hang on. Corliss. Yes, Dexter? Tell me again how much your father loves me. Well, it looks like Dexter is going to have to borrow Mr. Archer's tuxedo. But what about Corliss' rented wrap? Dexter, waiting to see it, is so agog he can't concentrate on anything else. Beautiful. Is it? Well, sure. No, it's not, Dexter. It's horrible. Oh, no, I wouldn't go that far. It's just sort of, well, maybe a little bit disgusting. It's awful. But all the better things were so expensive. I didn't have any more money. Yeah, like the man says, money talks. The whole trouble is all mine ever says is goodbye. <laughs> Corliss? Corliss! Corliss, look. Listen, Dexter. You know how Daddy said he'd be glad to let you borrow his tuxedo? Maybe Mom would let me borrow her wrap after all. Yeah, it could be. I'm gonna try it on. Okay. Wow! 
Well, you just see me in it. Yeah, yeah, try it on. Wow. Boy, if you could get that, we'd be a sensation at the dance. And what a time we'd have. night of the dance. Everybody should be pretty happy now. Corliss, I'm sure Dexter will be here. He's only 15 minutes late and he might have stopped oh, off I someplace. Won't miss the dance. Something's happened to him. I know it. I know it. He was run over, probably by a truck. In my tuxedo. Oh, Daddy, at a time like this. Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you see, I was... It's for me. Hello? Hiya, Mom. Yeah, I've been trying to get you for hours. Well, I, I just thought I'd tell you I cleaned up the attic and the cellar and the garage and I burned up all the junk. Oh, and I cleaned my room so there's not even a sock lying around. Oh, it was nothing. <laughs> of course, I practically broke my back, but I'd break my back for you anytime. No, I don't want anything for it. Well, I just thought if you'd want to show how grateful you are, well, you might lend Corliss your evening wrap just for tonight, huh? Oh, gee, you will? Oh, thanks, Mom. Yeah, I know it is. Yeah, Mom, I'm sure I know where it is. Mom, I tell you, I know where it is. <laughs> See? Okay, Mom. Right, goodbye. Turn around. Oh, Dex. <laughs> Corliss, please, not in front of your folks. Well, that's all right, Dexter. We do that once in a while, too. You see, dear, there wasn't anything to worry about. Now everything is all right. Oh, no, it isn't. Now no, what? what? Oh, by the time Dexter goes home and gets his tuxedo, we'll be late for the well, dance. how do I look? <laughs> Why, Dexter, you know, I hate to say this, but you don't look bad. <laughs> you look lovely, Dexter. Oh, by the way, hope there are no hard feelings. I mean, about my losing my temper the other night. Oh, of course not, Mr. Archer. Oh, good. Friends? Friends. <laughs> well, have a good time, kids. After all, we've been through quite a lot getting you off to this dance. But it was worth it if you both learned that you never have to be afraid to ask us for anything. And that goes for me, too. Gee, I'm glad you said that, Mr. Archer. Well, I meant it. Good, because my car doesn't have a carburetor in it, and I was going to ask if I could borrow yours. Oh, now, wait a minute. That's here. Come on, Carlos, let's start walking. Kids, the car's parked out front. The keys are in it. Oh, gee, thanks, Mr. Archer. <laughs> Almost ready, dear? Be right there. Good. <laughs> Just practicing. Say, you look beautiful. Thank you, kind sir. And you don't look bad yourself. On the level? On the level. <laughs> Dexter got this tuxedo back in pretty good shape. Yeah, it doesn't look so bad. Well, they couldn't have your wrap ready for tonight, huh? No. Well, I like it. And I like you. Come on. I hope that isn't one of those three-hour calls from Chicago. Hello. Hello. Oh, hello, Dexter. What? Yeah, well, sure, I'll look. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's here. <laughs> well, now, don't worry. We'll take real good care of it. Good night, Dexter. Those kids. Well, I hope we have as much fun in these outfits as they did last night. Well, we'll give it a mighty good try. <laughs> <laughs> 